All right, so welcome back. Um, what we're doing today is we're gonna be adding a context clue system. And what I mean by that is when we go into certain areas, like here when we can read our sign, I'm gonna have a little context clue show up on our character here so that we can just kind of add a little more life to our game. So it's a little more interesting. So yeah, let's uh, dive right in and get started. All right, so where we left off, we have this nice little transition between our rooms to make kind of a neat fade in between the two scenes. And what we're gonna be adding today is this little contextual button prompt where when we're near something that we can interact with, I want to have some sort of little, just a little message appear above our character's head. So uh, let's dive right in. So if we take a look at our art folder, and uh, under art, we want to look at the objects sprite sheet. Uh, there's a few that are already filled in here for us. So the objects I want to grab are going to be 79, 80, 88, and a, and actually, let's just do this one, just the one. Let's do object 100. Um, and that sounds pretty good to me. So what I want to do is I'm going to zoom in on my character here. I'm going to create a new empty game object underneath our character. And I'm gonna to add to this a sprite renderer. And I'm gonna set that sprite to be objects 80. All right, now I wanna have this be, uh, put it on the breakable layer, which puts it above the player. And then I'm going to move this so that it's above the player. And I didn't want 80, did I? I think I wanted maybe 100. Maybe I have to go back. Nope, there we go. Okay, and I'm gonna call this game object um, context clue. And this is just gonna be there to show you that there's something that you can interact with. Now, by default, I'm gonna have this off. And on my player here, all right, good, good, good. Don't want any of these things open right now. So what I'm gonna do is when our player walks into this trigger area where we can interact with something, I wanna send a signal from this box to the player to turn that on. So what I'm gonna do is go to my scripts. And this is getting a little messy here. Probably a good idea if I create a new folder inside here, organize this a bit. I'm gonna call this player scripts. I'll put the player hit in there, player movement, uh, heart manager, that's a player script. My earlier version that I didn't go over on screen. Um, let's see, that'll be good for now. It gives us a little bit more organization. So inside my player scripts, I'm going to create a new C-sharp script. I'm going to call this context Clue. Oh, as soon as my computer catches up with me, I will anyway. Context clue. And then I'll open that up in Visual Studio. And I'll meet you guys back here as soon as Visual Studio is open. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a reference to that game object that I'm using as my context clue. So I'm gonna say public game object. And I'll just call this context clue. And instead of using a start or an update method, I'm just going to use two little methods here. I'm going to use public void, let's say enable, no, I can't, yeah, I can use enable. And then another void for turning it off. And this is going to be public void disable. I don't want it to be on disable, I just want disable. So. When I'm enabling the context clue, I'm going to take that context clue, set it active. And when I'm disabling it, I'm going to take it, context clue, set active, false. So I'm just enabling it and disabling it. Now, what I'm going to actually make this work with here, uh, if I go to my player again, and on my player, I'm going to add the context clue script. And as soon as it's done compiling, it's going to want to know what that game object is. 
So my game object is the context clue right here. And what I want to do next is create a signal where I can send a signal from the, uh, the sign to the player to turn that on. So I'm going to go to my uh, scriptable objects. I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a new signal. And I'll call this context clue on. And then I'll create another one for turning it off. So create signal context clue off. Okay. And then in my uh, context clue box, I'm going to add a, actually to my player, I'm going to add a signal listener script to it. So add component, signal listener. And the signal I want to listen for for this one is context clue on. I'm going to add a new function. It's going to come from the context clue script. And from context clue, I want to grab Oh, did I not make those voids public? No, I did. I wonder if I didn't save it. So, from the context clue script, I want... Did it change it to on enable? It did change it to on enable. I just want enable. Thank you, Visual Studio. You're usually very helpful. Sometimes it's my fault that you're not. So, did I not save that again? No, I saved it. Why aren't you finding it, Unity? What did I break? Um, <laughs> nope, there it is. Enable. Um, and then, yeah, so that's it's going to accept the signal uh, to turn it on, and then it's going to enable the context clue. I'm going to add another signal listener. This one is going to take the context clue off signal. I'm going to have this also go to context clue. And from context clue, this one is going to disable. There we go. And now, what I want to do is I want to take a look at my sign script here. So. I'm going to open up my sign script, and if I wanted to, I could create I could create a masterclass to this called Interact, so that it's not just signs that are doing this. Sign would be a subclass of that, but that's something I can do later. I don't need to do that now. So what I want to do is I have two new signals here. So public signal, and we'll call this context on public signal context off. And then when we're um, uh, when we're putting the player in range, so if player in range is true, we're also going to context on dot raise to raise the signal. And when we're out of range, context off dot raise. Okay, um, that should be everything, but I haven't tested it yet, so. Let's see if and what I broke as soon as Unity's done compiling here. Oh yeah, and the sign needs to also know what those signals are that it needs to raise flags for. So with my sign selected here, I'm going to go to my scriptable objects. My context clue on is going to go in that signal, and context clue off goes in that one. So let's see what isn't working. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So we're not starting with the context clue on. It goes on when I'm up there, goes off when I go out. Cool. So that worked. So this is kind of a flexible system. Um, we can use these signals. There's no rigid um, transformation between these. So like, for example, if the player goes in, let's say we have a different version of the player that doesn't have this, then we're not in the script here rigidly calling um, other dot get component context clue and then raising it that way because that would cause a null exception error maybe maybe we want to change our player maybe we forget to 
change this after we change our player. We don't want it to break anything. Instead, this is just telling an observer object to tell the player something. And if that observer object doesn't have the player, then it, it's fine. It's not going to cause a null reference exception. So there we go. Um, you can join my Discord where I'm chatting every day. If you want to ask me any questions, you can ask any questions in the description down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can, um, I don't know, just say hi. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, like I said, feel free to ask. And yeah, I guess I will see you guys later. And I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful day.